Well, the 2024 election just started and American voters are already being attacked after Trump's historic Iowa win last night. Some of the media showed utter disdain for voters who supported him. He's playing the people that want the spectacle. Many of them feel that they've been the victim of the same kinds of stuff in life. For whatever reason, they've joined this cult. If we are worried about the rise of authoritarianism in this country, we are worried about potential rise of fascism in this country. If we're worried about our democracy falling to an authoritarian and potentially fascist form of government. The leader who is trying to do that is part of that equation. Mm -hmm. But people wanting that Correct. is a much mm -hmm. bigger part mm -hmm. of that That's equation. Right. These are white Christians. That this is a state that is overrepresented over by white Christians that are going to participate in these tonight. caucuses. Yes. Evangelical America is behind Donald Trump, and that sort of gets to the roots of like what Trumpism is now. And it is very much a group of people that that find that Trump is in some ways a second coming. Doug, I, I watched Joy Reid in full. I encourage everyone to go read the full comments. They, they're even worse. Yes, they are. So white evangelicals overrepresented, cult authoritarian. Did these people not see Basket of Deplorables and how that worked out? Wow. I don't think they care. I think they're so elitist and in some cases so racist that they don't care. My question is, we could barely, I mean, we could say something here that somebody takes offense to and they would try to ban us from outnumbered for the rest of the year. This group, and, and Joy Reid being one of them, has overtly been racist in many of her comments on many occasions, and MSNBC doesn't care. It's interesting also to me for Rachel Maddow. Has she ever looked up the definition of fascist? Yeah. I, I don't think she ever has. It's just something she likes to throw out. Mm -hmm. Because it, when you look at a government controlling the economy, she, she needs to go look it up. But this is amazing to me. I've always thought in politics you added, not subtracted. They could care less. Their mm. elitist attitudes, they could care less about the people who vote for Republican, not just Trump. Let's get this, let's go back to our earlier conversation. This isn't just about Trump. This is about all Republicans and all conservatives we don't like or agree with. Oh, and Joy Reid's maniacal, unhinged rants got worse as the evening went on. Watch this one. 81% of those people agree with Donald Trump that immigrants are poisoning the blood of this country. That means that 81% of the Republican primary electorate believe Nikki Haley has poisoned blood and is poisoning the blood of the United States. So th that as a roadblock for Nikki Haley is impossible. It's the elephant in the room. She's still a brown lady that's got to try to win in a party that is deeply anti-immigrant and which accepts the notion that you can say immigrants are poisoning the blood of our country. She's getting, you know, birthered by Donald Trump. I mean, Harris. Yeah, this is, this is the point when um, you have to really question what the goal is. Is it to make sure that an electorate is informed and ready to go vote, or is it to spew hate? I can't answer that for them. I can't answer that for, for, for her, for the woman talking there, Joy Reid. But what I can say is this was a missed opportunity by Nikki Haley, too. She needed to get that slavery question right. Mm. She needed to own that, remind everybody who Abe Lincoln was, and remind everybody that the war started in her state at Fort Sumter, not far from where she was born and raised in that state, as a brown young girl and now woman. She could have owned that moment. And maybe that's a moment that she can get back and go forward. But to have somebody talk about you that way, as if you are worth nothing, is not acceptable. And a presidential candidate at that. And let me just say this. The times in my life where a person who was on the left side of the political aisle made me feel less than outnumber <coughs> the other way around. Just in my own experience as a military brat, to have the president now trying to have a second term, Joe Biden, who said, if you didn't vote for him, you weren't black, who called out one of his own staff members, a boy, at mm. a public event, and that happened to him more than once, or it was the president who perpetrated that against someone else more than once. I mean, those are things that don't leave you memory, like missing your memory. I, I'm not going to forget that. So I think that, you know, if she's attacking presidential candidates, maybe we need to remind people of what some of the current guy has mm. done. 
Although yeah. I don't really want to focus on the negative because yeah. that doesn't take us forward. Leslie, and after calling all Trump supporters anti-immigrant authoritarian cultist, they didn't even let Donald Trump speak. They muzzled him. Watch this one. At this point in the evening, the projected winner of the Iowa caucuses um, has just started giving his victory speech. Uh, we will keep an eye on that as it happens. There is a reason that we and other news organizations have generally stopped giving an unfiltered live platform to remarks by former President Trump. His remarks tonight will not air here live. We will monitor them. Donald Trump declaring victory with a historically strong showing in the Iowa caucuses. If these numbers hold, here he is right now under, under my voice. You hear him repeating his anti-immigrant rhetoric. Majorities of caucus goers saying that they believe the lie. So he can't speak. The guy who represents half the country can't speak. When you are a news network, I don't care what network you are, you should report the news, and that should be both sides. And, you know, so if uh, Joe Biden's talking, you know, you, yep. you should cover it. I understand every network is, is, is a business, okay? And every network, you know, you have ratings and you have advertising. And if, if you're making that decision because, okay, we're into it, we don't see good trends, let's cut away, that's one thing. You know, but, but you, have, you have to put out the information to the American people and let them make their right. decisions. Right, instead of Jake That's Tapper. That's journalism 101. Instead of Jake Tapper saying, under my voice, the guy who represents half the country, I'm paraphrasing here, is giving anti-immigrant rhetoric. Like, let the people here, let them make the decision, not some news anchor sitting in an ivory tower. Of course, they can say that to their two viewers. I think the ratings and <laughs> statistics show what Americans want, which is for them to decide what they want to listen to. So networks like ours that show every Thing, I think prove that choice is important. I will say who's surprised by this vitriol, by this reprehensible racist commentary we've just been subjected to. It was a reverend that said Whitney Houston's music wasn't black enough. It's all, you know, a sycophantine for a president that said you're not black enough if you don't vote <laughs> for me. This is a human that says apparently based on the color of your skin it automatically indicates a privilege and a whole set of values that nothing will change. And they are talking about a presidential candidate that remember was vilified for her name being whitewashed as an assumption when it's on her birth certificate and it's Indian and I shouldn't even have to explain that why the point is no one will ever be good enough for any of those people on the left that remains in the GOP because we don't fit their boxes and their disgusting oversimplification of who we are and I'll just conclude by reiterating what I said earlier which was that over eight out of ten people who voted overwhelmingly for Trump in that historic annihilation last night in Iowa said it is because he fights for people like me and and the me is a million things, and it's the left that seems to put it only into one title. Doug, and the yeah. New York Times, which had to essentially apologize to readers after getting 2016 so wrong, yeah. they apparently didn't learn any lessons. They said Donald Trump is manifestly unworthy. This is their editorial board. He's facing criminal trials for his conduct as a candidate in 2016 as president. And as a former president in his third presidential bid, he's intensified his multi-year campaign to undermine the rule of law in the democratic process. They go on to mischaracterize yeah. his di dictator joke. Uh, manifestly unworthy, they declared. Yeah, why don't the New York Times look at their manifestly unworthy to look at unworthy Pulitzers that were won on a fake Russia story? Ooh, yes. Go with that Burn. one. There but you, you know, go. The, uh, the other question is there that really bothers me is, uh, is my dad, who always taught me as a state trooper, who said, sent me to school and to learn, and I have several degrees. Some of you may disagree. You may think I'm not the brightest person in the world. That's okay. But my country, and this is science, is about having differences of opinion. It's about education. It's about learning. It's about creative thought. And then when you sit there and you tell half of this country that you're wrong simply because what you believe, this is the part that our country needs to work on right there. Hey, everyone. I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.